So Langchain and Streamlit, two extremely popular Python libraries. But what if we just were able to combine them together? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how we can build out two different applications uh, by utilizing these libraries. And the best part is we're gonna be able to build out both applications with a total of under 60 lines of code. This is gonna be very geared towards a beginner friendly tutorial. And you just need to have a little bit of basics of how Langchain works as well as Streamlit. Now the Streamlit side of things, you can pick it up like that. With Langchain, there's a little bit more complexity with it. As long as you have the basic understanding of how agents work, you should be able to build out both applications. So that being said, let's start coding this live in VS Code. All right, so let's get started. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import in a few different libraries. So import in Streamlit as st, then we're gonna import in pandas, or pandas as pd, and then we're gonna say from langchain underscore open AI, import chat open AI, like that. Uh, by the way, if you don't have, if you have some error messages under these, you have to pip install them. Uh, so pretty easy to do, but just pip install and put that in your command line or terminal. So we have that over there. Uh, then we're gonna import in OS. So what we're gonna use OS, we're gonna set up an environment variable. So I'm gonna say environ like this, and then I'm gonna say our open AI, open AI underscore API underscore key. And we're gonna say that's equal to, you're gonna put your key here. Now your key should start with SK. You can, if you don't have one, you can grab one from the open AI website. I documented this pretty well in our first video in this series. So make sure you put that there. I'm personally not gonna put my key here. Uh, I will be running the program here at the very end just to show you how it works, uh, but make sure you put your key over here. And I'm gonna get probably get some error messages uh, because I don't have my key, but we'll just say SK over here and uh, keep moving forward with the code. Now this is pretty easy for the rest of this. So the first thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna set up our LM. I'm gonna say that's equal to chat open AI like this, you can set up a temperature. I'm gonna just say our temperature is 0 0.5, which our temperature is kind of like, I've seen a lot of tutorials, the spiciness of results. So mild, whatever. Um, I've seen a lot of people either put like zero or 0 0.5. It's kind of standard across the board. Up next, I'm gonna define an LLM string. And I'm gonna say this is gonna be a text input. So in Streamlit for text input, pretty easy. st.text input like this. And then we can say in over here, whatever we want, I'm gonna say enter some text like that, okay. Next thing that we're gonna do is set up a button. So we're gonna create an if statement based off this button. So I'm gonna call it as button clicked. And we're gonna say that's gonna be equal to st.button. And we're gonna put over here, ask GPT like that. All right, and now we can create a, a basic if statement. So we can say if button clicked, which is the user, ac user action of clicking a button, then we're gonna say if LLM string, which is this over here, right? So we're taking a look at this and we're building out these if statements because we don't want our program to crash. So you wanna make sure everything is inputted incorrectly. So we're gonna say if LLM string is not none, which means we have to put something in that string, right? We're gonna say our result equals, and we're gonna do lm.invoke. Um, it's changed a little bit how you use your LLMs in Langchain, so now we're gonna use invoke. So just put invoke over here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed the LLM this string that we built out. So put string in this LLM invoke, we have LLM string, okay? And then what we can do is st.write, and we can say our LLM results, right? And then lastly, what we're gonna do is another write, and I'll show you another way that we could write this out, but we're gonna say write, and we're gonna put our results. So what we get from this LLM, we can just put this directly in our Streamlit application with write. Another one I've seen, and this was on some documentation I saw with a link chain type of application uh, within Streamlit, is they use st.info. So I'll show you what both of those look like if you want. And probably the best way to approach this later on in the series is gonna be 
specifically building out a, a chat application, but since this is our first video and we haven't really covered memory and talking back and forth multiple messages, we'll do this a little bit later on. So let me just show you what write looks like first. And we wanna finish this if statement, by the way, we didn't even finish that. Uh, we're gonna say else, and we're gonna have a warning message. So st.warning, like this, enter text before sending to LLM. It's something easy and make sure you save your application. So like my application that I have on my computer, I named this as streamlet underscore langchain v1. And just to show you how I run this on here, I'm just gonna run a new terminal over here. And I'm just gonna run this line over here. Let me just comment this out. So I'll be putting this under my terminal, uh, pi m streamlet run streamlet langchain v1 pi. Uh, but that's just because my streamlet is kind of installed a little bit weird on my computer. I should fix that. But regardless, let me load up this application. All right, so we have this built out now. And again, very bare bones. We could really add to this if we wanted to. We could have a title over here. We could have someone put in their API key. I'm keeping it basic for you guys. So enter in some text. Let's just do for an example, what are the top five most valuable baseball cards? Now it won't have the best results because the data isn't trained up to real time. But in reality, we should expect at least a Babe Ruth a 1916 card on here, a Hannes Wagner, 1952 Mantle. Uh, but let's ask our GPT and see what this is gonna show. Now I'm gonna use st.write for this first one. I'm gonna rerun this with st.info just so you can see the formatting difference between the two and favor what you like, right? So as of 2021, the top five most valuable baseball cards are Hannes Wagner T206, right? Consider Holy Grail baseball cards, Mickey Mantle 1952 tops. 1916 Ruth Sporting News, which by the way, there's a earlier 1913 Babe Ruth card that sold uh, back when he was with Baltimore over here. And then let's see what's up next. For Ty Cobb T206, so they actually didn't do this correctly because most T206 Cobb cards aren't super, super expensive. They are expensive. They're a few thousand in like low grades, uh, but this is the T206 Cobb back, which funny enough, as I'm recording today, 131, uh, there was one just recently discovered and it's all over the sports card Instagram. I'm nerding out, I know. And then over here, the T210 uh, Joe Jackson. Uh, funny thing about that card as well. Back in the 90s, I want to say, talking to dealers, it was like a $10,000 card. Now it's $3 million, which is a, a pretty big ROI for that person uh, who ended up selling that. But that's uh, our ST.right. Let's take a look at ST.info. And the reason why I geek out on sports cards is I have a sports card a YouTube channel and I love sports cards. So uh, I'm just refreshing this over here and we're gonna see what Invo looks like now. So I'm just gonna rerun this over here. And of course I uh, forgot to coming out one other thing. So let's rerun this over here. So this is just gonna show you what st.info is. Uh, so we have top five most valuable baseball cards here. Let's change up the sport this time and let's take a look at football. So it's gonna be funny. Some of the cards in this top five list have gone down in value, like the Tom Brady rookie. Um, if it does show up, because he had some crazy sales in 2020 and 2021. Uh, but I'd also expect like a, a Jim Brown rookie card over here. It went too fast. I couldn't even go through this list. But as of 2021, the top, so 1958 Jim Brown tops rookie card. Uh, number two, they have said 1965 Joe Namath. The Tom Brady rookie over here, the 86 Jerry Rice and Unitas. I don't know if this list is the most accurate as of today, but it's pretty good overall. Some iconic vintage cards as well as the Brady rookie. So that's just kind of an example. And look, there's also stuff that we could clean up. Like we could probably clean up getting rid of this content over here and making the formatting of this a lot nicer. And we could really limit the amount of text that we're sending out over here too. But, and just, Basic with Streamlit, this is how you can do that. So I wanna show you guys another application of this, and this is with a CSV reader. So let's get back into coding. I'm just gonna open up another file over here. So put out a new Python file, bring that over here, and we will start shortly. All right, so let me show you really quick 
what data we're going to actually put in here. So I'm just going to grab Chrome. I'll throw this in. So essentially, I showed this in my CSV video, but we're going to be grabbing stats from baseball reference and throwing the CSV into a Streamlit application. And then we could ask questions off of the CSV and just uh, plain English. So pretty cool application. And uh, honestly, it's just a little bit more complicated than what we just coded. But let's get that going. So a lot of the stuff in the beginning is going to be the same, right? So import streamlit as ST, then import pandas as PD. Now, what you are going to have to do, you're going to have to pip install this over here. So from Langchain, we're going to bring an experimental over here. So you probably don't have this on your computer yet. So make sure you pip install that. Uh, we're going to say agents agent underscore toolkits and we're going to import create csv agent and then once again from ling chain open ai we're going to import in chat open ai import chat open ai same thing as before with our os so import os and then you can set up your os dot environmental key environ right but over here, open AI API underscore key equal to grab your key, put it over here. Remember it starts with the S K then again, same thing. LM equals chat, open AI temperature equals 0 0.5. Throw that in over here, nothing new and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import in file. So the way we can do that is uploaded file. We're going to say it's equal to streamlets file uploader. So st file uploader. And then I'm just going to literally say choose a file. Easy enough, right? Then we're going to say lm string equals st text input like this. And then we're going to say enter some text, enter some text. All right, we did that. And uh, the first application. Then what we're gonna do is a button click once again. So button clicked, and this is gonna be equal to st dot button. And for a baseball pun, we're gonna say hit me like that as we're talking about baseball hitters. I know it's corny. Yeah, you can you can roast me in the comment section. Uh, so we're gonna go if button clicked like this, and then we're gonna say if uploaded file this time is not none and and none should be capitalized and and we're going to say lm string which probably faster if i just type that up but is not none and we're going to go through the rest of this so we're first going to set up our agent executor and I talked about this in the CSV video, which isn't out yet by the time I'm recording this one, but I wasn't sure with the documentation if this should be an agent executor or just an agent. So correct me if I am wrong. I do apologize for that, but we're gonna throw in our LM. We're gonna throw in up here, uploaded file. And in that video, we would normally put our like CSV file in over here. This time, since we're uploading a file, we're gonna set that to our uploaded file. And um, I don't want to see what's going on. So I'm going to say a verbose equals false. If you want to see it, awesome. I, I don't care for this one. Uh, then we're going to say our result equals, and we're going to say our agent executor this time. We're going to invoke, and we're going to invoke this LLM string. Okay. And then st the right, and we'll say, agent we'll just say like data from csv and st dot write our results right and then we're gonna have our else st dot warning we'll say and upload a file and enter text before submitting uh, just to walk through this code again, right? We imported what we needed to bring in. We set up our API key right over there. Uploaded file, right? We're gonna bring in uploaded file. 
we set up a string uh, to input in user text. Then we have a button that we click to submit to send it to our large language model. Uh, just some information over here to make sure everything is working properly, right? We will, once the button is clicked, then we have an action that takes place. Then we call this over here, which is either the agent or agent executor. Uh, but we create our CSV agent. We throw in our large language model, which is what we defined over here. Our file, which we brought in over here. Our both equals false because we don't want to see every calculation that's going on. Uh, result equals agent executor invoke. And we invoke the string that we inputted in and we get our data. So, so one other thing that I did just to make this easier. So I'm going to go over here to standard batting uh, for this player, share and export. I just modified this. So realistically, like you could probably clean this up with the pandas data frame and then do a bunch of junk, right? But like for this video purpose, right? Let's X out all this stuff because it's going to ruin our formatting, right? Cross out all of those. And then if we scroll over here, I'm going to cross out awards and then you can just export this out as a CSV. I've already done that. So I just want to show you really quick what this looks like within our application. All right. So here is our Streamlit application. Again, very bare bones like the first one. Feel free to add in a title, spruce this up as you want, but I'm going to keep it basic. So we can choose a file over here. Let's grab our CSV, which I have over here as Tris Speaker. So make sure we open that and we can enter in some text. So I will tell you that this is still pretty buggy, but uh, I'm gonna just put over here, what is the total AB? Which is gonna be, if we go back over here, right? Our at bats. So we removed the total column, but what we can do with this natural language is pretty much determine how many at bats. So click over here, hit me. And you can see what is the input. And it obviously did not work because we have an output over here of NAN. So let's try that again. And you can see this time, right? Nothing changed in the code, but uh, we have our input. What is the total AB? And then we had 10, 195. I'm just going to refresh this page over here with Tris Speaker. And you can see 10,195. So let's find out an, another example. Uh, let's say like, what is the total runs this time? So we just have R. Let's see if it picks up on runs. So I'm going to say like, what is the total runs and see if that picks it up. So I'm going to say hit me again. Awesome. So we have what is the total runs and it says 1882. So let's go to this runs column. We have 1882. So it picked up that R stood for runs and then we were able to grab that. Maybe we can do another one over here. Um, let's see over here. What is the average strikeouts maybe? per year. Let's try that. What is the average strikeouts per year? Maybe a little more complex. Not sure if this will work, but oh, it actually got it. What is the average strikeouts per year? It says 17.86. So let's go to this strikeouts column 393. It says that 162 game average is going to be 23. And we're a little bit off on that. But I think the parameters are a little bit different because this is just taking a look at, in general, the strikeouts over each season versus this one, which is going to look at 162 games. So that's why we're going to be a little bit off. But essentially, it's pretty cool, right? Uh, just upload that CSV and we could ask whatever questions we wanted. Of course, I had to do a baseball themed one. Hey, you made it. So congrats on building out these two applications. I know they're more on the basic side of things, but we can really expand these out later with future projects. Now, with that being said, I upload two to three videos every single week on this channel. If you aren't subscribed, I would greatly appreciate it. Subscription is free, but it does help YouTube share this channel with others and shows YouTube that this was a pretty good video. And if you wanna watch even more LangChain videos, I have a full playlist right over here.